there is a lot of debate within English futsal around where the future direction is. We've now kind of almost applied the handbrake. And whilst people are speaking out and saying, look, you know, it's business as usual, I think more and more people are a little bit more skeptical around whether that's actually true. It's going to be damaging. The sport of futsal was supposed to be the next big thing in England. TV deals, a professional league, a way of living. Lots of teams were relying on it to hit in the big time, but then it all changed. You know, that, that's, that's, what I would, that's my dream, I'd love to play professionally. Because I'd love it, I'd love it to be massive over here. When you're involved in a competitive sport, it's hard to give up. Money drives everything, doesn't it? Uh, and I think that's where futsal's going to suffer. Futsal is a variation on the traditional football game, which involves fewer players, a heavier ball and a smaller indoor pitch. It originates in South America and places emphasis on skill and close control. The Football Association has been back in the sport as a way to improve the quality of football players and were aiming to set up a professional league. Teams like Carlisle have invested plenty of time and money into setting themselves up as a professional club following this. But after the FA failed on their promise, they quit the National Futsal League. We're spending ten to £12,000 a year just to run a National League club because of where our location is. Um, and the battle we had trying to attract the kind of players that, that we needed to compete at that level, um, not just Super League level, even the, the level below. Um, it was an ongoing battle. I mean, the carrot of National League futsal, um, Super League futsal for us, was that it was going to turn professional at some point. Um, we were sold in 2012 when we applied for the National League that, you know, 2016 17 is going to be a TV deal. Set yourself up professionally as a club or as professionally as you can, obviously. Um, and those, those clubs will be taken forward into a televised format. And that was the carrot for us. And that was why we put hours and hours and hours of work into it and a hell of a lot of money as well. Um, when that was taken away, there was not much sense in carrying on. FS Derby, like Carlisle, is a club all too familiar with the struggle of keeping a team together without much FA support. Chairman Matt Hardy was close to stepping away from his passion and empathises with those futsal clubs that fade away. We, we were faced with a real challenging situation where we thought, have we taken this as far as we can? Are we going to? Is our, our hard work going to be acknowledged? Is it going to be all for nothing? And is it time really now to look at pulling the plug? Fortunately for me, I had some really good conversations with some key people, some friends who I've made within the game, um, some people who I've been around for an awful long time, um, and they really encouraged me to stay part of it. And I hung on, and I'm glad I did because. We, we've managed to, to pull through and come, come through the worst of the, the end of the summer and the early part of the season. Unless you are you have that desire and that know-how to try and set those type, kind of links up, um, to try and look for sponsors, to attract sponsors, to, to promote yourself in terms of media, in terms of social media, um, and to continue to work even though things are hard to start with, it can become a real big problem and I don't think it's any surprise that we've seen so many clubs drop out. Those who were in charge of futsal at the FA have left their positions in the last year following a supposed restructure. With no one to push the sport forward, some individuals aren't sure that enough is being done. Doug Reed had to move abroad to pursue his futsal career, having felt like he had outgrown the English game. There's a lack of leadership, I think. I think, I think the FA is still not sure where futsal fits in and what's the future for futsal. So they haven't really created a strategy and a plan to grow the sport. Um, and it just generally lacks a promotion and marketing in England. I think you see with the women's league, uh, women's football league, like it was a, a minor sport, but a lot of people were playing it. And I think that's the situation where futsal is. And then since then, they, they invested in the women's league and created a semi-professional league and invested in the England team. And you've seen how popular now the women's game is, it's on TV. And I think that's, that's the model that the, the, the FA should be copying really for futsal. It is frustrating to those involved in building up the English futsal game how the sport is undervalued in comparison to other countries around the world. Seth Burkett wrote an award winning book on his time playing football in Brazil and believes that attitudes towards futsal in both countries 
are completely opposite. It's two different worlds, it really is. Um, I mean, in Brazil, everyone knows futsal, everyone's played futsal. Um, whereas in England, I come, I, I see someone on the street, I say, yeah, I play futsal. I say, what's that? And yeah, you have to end up saying it's indoor by the side, which of course it's nothing like that at all, but otherwise, you, know, you can just bore them. Uh, so in, in Brazil, everyone's played futsal, absolutely everyone. Um, when they're a kid, they play it. They kind of learn the Brazilian way of playing through futsal. Maybe that's something that will change in the future. Um, but I mean, they're still worlds apart, and you know, just futsal is very, very Brazilian. Whereas in England, we're still very much uh, starting. Dan Slater played futsal in Australia up until the age of 18. When he came over to England, he thought the sport would flourish. But like Seth, he noticed the lack of appreciation for the game he loves. Culture of Australia, uh, you obviously have quite a diverse community. So you've got English people going over, you've got strong Spanish, Italian communities, Portuguese, Brazilians. So I suppose a lot of those people that are now living in Perth have developed quite a futsal community. Whilst in England, perhaps there isn't that, um, that same culture here yet. And it hasn't, well, I think England as a country is quite guarded with its five-a-side, you know, very protective, they're very happy with the five-a-side. And it's only recently that, you know, we've started thinking, oh, actually, futsal, quite beneficial. Futsal is the fastest growing indoor sport in the world and played by 25,000 people across England. However, the sport still suffers from a major lack of funding to help clubs with expenses such as admin costs and facilities. Rob Brassett has been a long-time follower of the game, but his futsal club finds profits hard to come by. To run a team for a season costs you between five to seven thousand pounds. And we're just going to make that this season. We're going to just break even with money coming in from sponsorship and funding and things like that. Funding, funding things are drying up now. If funding stops, we'd have been about 4,000 down. So then we need people like myself, you have to try and find money out of your own pocket. With clubs up and down the country annoyed with the lack of progress the sport is making on a professional level, some have taken to social media to express their concerns. Simon is chairman of one of the National League's biggest clubs, but is also one of the main critics of the English futsal. He created the hashtag silence on futsal to spark debate on whether the FA truly backs the sport. I, I think uh, it's quite common knowledge at the moment that uh, there is a lot of debate within English futsal around where the future direction is. Uh, I think we've seen a, almost a, a little bit of a downgrading of the profile of futsal and communication coming out from the FA in terms of uh, their future plans. Uh, so. The hashtag was really, again, just adding to that debate, really. I think there's a lot of people that, uh, like myself, are uh, passionate about English futsal and the future direction of it. Um, and we want to engage, obviously, with the national governing body to make sure that uh, our voice is heard. There's clubs up and down the country, people that are uh, putting in their own time and effort to make sure that futsal still operates, uh, regardless of, uh, at the moment, what we seem to see is a lack of kind of uh, uh, acknowledgement from the FA on that. We had BBC Cumbria coming down to every one of our, uh, our home games and when I was listening back on the radio later on, uh, it really hit home what we'd created. I think that was the first time where I thought to myself, wow, like three years work here and uh, like I say, that all changed. Right on the edge of the area to Derby, 5-4 to Carlisle. That is it though. English futsal at the present moment is still at a crossroads, with not many knowing what the future holds for the sport. But those who have put their hearts into futsal are still hopeful that one day their efforts will be rewarded. It can go all the way. Whether it does that in five years' time, I have no idea. I hope it does because I truly do love the game. I think everyone involved in futsal uh, has an appreciation. It's a very passionate community. No matter where you go in the world, uh, there's a you know there's a drive. There's a, a real push to kind of move up the profile of futsal so that everyone gets to enjoy it.